It's finally the big day for the motorsport is here and many of you will dive into the adventure head first with their trusty wheels but the default settings of this game are garbage. Which is why I prepared my super duper custom slider force feedback settings for you which you can find now on the screen. But caution, those were created for a Moza R12, a direct drive wheelbase with loads of power. So those settings might not be perfect on other hardware, especially a G29, a Thrustmaster T300 or lower. Which is why we'll have a look at all the sliders and what they actually do right now so you can tweak everything to your liking. And first up we start at the driving assists, one of the most important settings is the steering, set it to simulation. If you're playing on the controller, normal is also fine. Normal can also be fine with the with the wheel, but simulation is the way to go in my opinion. ABS and traction control you can set to your liking. I think ABS on and having traction control on sport is a good middle ground to still have full control over the vehicle, but not drive a GT3 car without any ABS or traction control. All right, but let's move on to the sliders. You can find them in the settings under advanced input. Just scroll a little down and they start with vibration scale, which is our first point here on the list. This sets the intensity of the vibration and is set to 100 in my slider setup. The slider is like one of two volume sliders which determine the strength, the overall strength of the force feedback itself. In this case it's about how pronounced the vibrations are from bumps, curbs, sliding, going off track and so on. As long as your wheel can handle it, I would go all the way on smaller hardware like I said the G29, T300 RS or even smaller, this might be a slider you have to tune down at least a little. Next up is the force feedback scale and this is the slider where you set the overall strength of the force feedback. Important here is not to go too stiff as this will interfere with many subtle details that can then get lost in clipping. The slider highly depends on your wheel's overall strength. For my 12 Nm direct drive wheel a value between 60 and 80 felt alright depending on the car. On a street car 80 is a bit better. On a car with a lot of aero I would go lower to maybe 60. The steering self alignment I wouldn't touch if I were you. Just leave it at 100. It's just the most natural feel otherwise it interferes quite a bit with how steering works in this game. But let's quickly move on to the most important slider of them all, the mechanical trail scale. This slider scales, just like it says, the mechanical trail, which tackles the most important issue in the force feedback. You see, the most pronounced feeling in the steering is the loss of traction from your front tires. Every time you steer into a corner, the FFP will go super light when the limit of grip is reached. Which is feedback you want, yes, but not like that. What we want is a trail, a smooth transition between grip and going over the limit. And this is what the slider does. I would say everything between 150 and 200 is okay. Just make sure you find the perfect sweet spot for you. The next slider is quite similar, the pneumatic trail scale. The mechanical trail is the effect seen from the suspension geometry and this one from the deforming tire itself. Which is why we can't go overboard here. Raising this to 200 for example will make the effect of sudden traction loss super pronounced again which is why I recommend a setting of 100. But if the feedback of sudden grip loss is still too strong for you, you can go lower than 100 here to fix that. Just keep in mind that that will lower the overall strength of the FFB again and that you will have to fine tune the force feedback scale again. The next slider is quickly explained, that's the road feel scale. It gives you more pronounced bumps and curbs and lets you feel the asphalt more. If you like effects like those, you can go for 110 like me, if not, scale it down. The load sensitivity slider is basically the opposite to the mechanical and pneumatic trail slider. This will give you more feedback on how much load sits on the tires while cornering. So basically it loads up in fast turns and will try and communicate how the tires are dealing with the load while cornering. I feel like 50 is a good place to be to not mess with the other settings too much and still feel like you're in control in faster corners. Next 
the wheel dampening scale and I have it set to 20. This adds force to the movement of your steering wheel, a strange setting to be honest. If you turn it up, it messes with all the other forces in the steering. If you turn it off, it's like there's no force in the wheel on the straight. So yeah, 20 is a good compromise, I feel like. Next is the center spring scale, a setting that I quite dislike, but you maybe would enjoy. A lot of cars have this in real life, a force that centers the steering wheel on its own. I think a setting of 100 is even dangerous in this game, as it leads to heavy oscillation, a wrist breaker, so to speak. Also, this interferes quite a bit with all the other settings, so I'm setting this to off. But you could go up to maybe 40, 50 ish, I would say, depending on your preference. And the dynamic damper behavior is already the last slider you should touch. This is uh, the classic damper. As we know, it takes out some of the details as it's dampening all the effects and gives a bit of a delay to the forces. But in return, it saves you from that fast spikes in the FFB, like after a crash or uh, clipping a sausage curb too much. So we don't actually want it, but we kind of need it, which is why everything between 10 and 30 should be all right. I, for my part, I'll go with 10. The other settings you can see, steering sensitivity, steering linearity, and the gamepad steering filters are settings for gamepad users, so don't touch those, leave it at 50-50 and off. And for all the purists out here, here are my Moza pit house settings. So you can copy those down as well if you would like to have the exact settings that I use. How do you like those settings? What would you change? And maybe leave down in the comments your own settings for different wheels so everybody can enjoy perfect FFB in Forza Motorsport. And if you need more news on Forza, check out my review of the game where I talk about in detail where the strengths and the weaknesses of this new title lie. But that's it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time around. Cheers!